Breaking news, an impeachment earthquake. The chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Jerry Nadler, now considering formally recommending articles of impeachment against the president of the United States. In a moment, Jerry Nadler, the chairman, will be my guest. He, of course, is the person who will lead any formal impeachment proceedings. He and Speaker Nancy Pelosi are the two names who will make history on this issue in Congress. And at this hour, Nadler's committee is now engaged in a full-blown investigation. Manu Raju is out front live on Capitol Hill. And Manu, your source is telling you that Nadler is there. Yeah, the House Judiciary Committee is moving forward to determine whether or not to recommend articles of impeachment against this president, something that could be decided later this year. Now, as soon as the end of this year, now, recent court fights, statements by top Democrats make very clear that that's the direction they're moving in. And as we're seeing Democrat after Democrat formally call for an impeachment inquiry, Democrats are saying, well, what the House Judiciary Committee is doing is essentially that investigating whether or not to impeach the president of the United States. Look no further than a lawsuit that was filed just yesterday to try to compel Don McGahn, the former White House counsel, to appear before the House Judiciary Committee can comply with the subpoena after the president told McGahn not to comply with that subpoena. In that lawsuit, it says the committee is actively considering articles of impeachment against this president. And Speaker Nancy Pelosi endorsed that language, also endorsed similar language that was in a separate lawsuit. And increasingly, she is leaving the door open to moving forward. But Aaron, the ultimate question is, will they in fact move forward or instead rely on this, inf this language in the lawsuit to try to convey to the courts to turn this information over? Yeah. That's a big question for them in the days ahead. All Aaron. right, Manu, thank you very much. And out front, as I said, the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, uh, Geraldine Nadler. Uh, chairman, thank you so much. Uh, good to see you in person. So, good to be here. Uh, look, I know you're doing what you've called a full-blown impeachment investigation. Uh, that you have been doing that. Uh, obviously, you know we've spoken with someone familiar uh, with your thinking, and, and we asked, do you support an impeachment inquiry? The source told CNN, it's as clear as day. Is it? Well, I think it's important not to get hung up on semantics. The fact is we are doing uh, an investigation. We are investigating the facts. We are investigating the evidence. We're, we're going into court to get witnesses, uh, all with a view toward deciding and recommending to the House whether to impeach the president. We have the power to... Uh, vote uh, articles of impeachment, and we are uh, investigating now to get the evidence to decide whether to do so. So are you waiting on anything from the House Speaker? Because obviously no, publicly not, she has, you're not waiting We're not on. waiting on anything from the House Speaker. The House Speaker has been very cooperative. We could not have filed the lawsuits without her. Uh, the House Council filed the lawsuits. The House she's Council not publicly the saying it, but she's ma you're saying, but she is there. She is cooperating uh, with, the, with the committee's investigation. The committee... Uh, has gone into court to force uh, Don McGahn to testify. Uh, Don McGahn is the key uh, fact witness who was who mentioned who, who 500 who times in the Mueller report. Mentioned 500 times in the Mueller report, but he testified essentially to Mueller that he witnessed at least uh, 10 uh, instances of criminal obstruction of justice by the president. Mm -hmm. And so he is now the Mueller report is a summary of evidence. We want to get the direct evidence. We want his testimony as to, as to those criminal obstructions of justice by the president. But we also want uh, testimony from other people about other uh, violations of law, about the, you know, the, the, the Mueller, uh, the hearing that we had gave the lie to three things that the president and the attorney general were saying. They were saying that the Mueller report exonerated the president, that uh, it showed no collusion, that it proved no collusion and no obstruction. To the contrary, all of those three statements are false. The report did not exonerate the president. The report shows considerable evidence of collusion that the... That right, it the, didn't establish to a criminal level of conspiracy. Conspiracy, but it, but it, but it did more than that. Yeah. It showed that the Russian government tried to subvert the election to help Trump, that the Trump campaign knew about it... And welcomed uh, it. And, ...and welcomed it and cooperated in many ways with it, and that uh, the president then lied to, and others then lied to investigators. So, so what a lot of people say, okay, you say let's not get wrapped up in words, but words can matter when they, they, when they apply to what information you can get and how the American people see it, right? So, so I, I'm trying to understand, because a lot of Democrats, they don't want to be forced to vote for an impeachment inquiry, but they presumably would be willing to vote for impeachment itself if you presented well, no, them with the evidence. There's no such thing. Um, the committee has initiated an investigation into the question... Uh, in, into the various malfeasances. So in your mind, the, you're saying this is exactly the same as what we all call formal impeachment proceedings by another this name? Is, this is formal impeach, impeachment proceedings. We are investigating all the evidence. We're gathering the evidence. And we will, at the conclusion of this, uh, hopefully by the end of the year, uh, vote 
to vote uh, uh, articles of impeachment to the House floor, or we won't. That's a decision that we'll have to make. But, that, that, but that's exactly the process we're in right now. All right, so when you say it is formal impeachment proceedings, have you started drafting or preparing any articles of impeachment should you need them? There are uh, articles of impeachment that were introduced a number of months ago and re were referred to the committee. And uh, as the investigation proceeds, we may want to draft our own uh, articles of impeachment uh, 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 that may more closely fit the evidence. We'll see. So, okay, when you talk about Don McGahn and others and other things you want, you want all the backup data, you want to be able to talk to whomever you want. But when people hear impeachment inquiry and they, they, they think a la Watergate, when am I going to see this parade of people? When am I going to see them testify? Like, like we saw Michael well, Cohen, hopefully, like we saw hopefully, hopefully, Bob hopefully we will see witnesses uh, in, in the committee in, in September and October witnesses whom we don't have to use uh, uh, court orders to get there. Hopefully, uh, we'll get court orders to, for people like uh, uh, McGahn and Hope Hicks and uh, various other people. And, and if we get McGahn, we'll get all the others because the legal arguments are the same. That's the one you're fighting yeah. for, though. But, so but, the legal arguments are the, but the legal arguments are the same. But you think, are, the there, are there some people who are of true importance uh, who you're going to get in September and October? Are there any examples you could give us? I'm not going to give any examples now, but I think there will be witnesses. And remember, the, we're not limited. Yeah. to the Mueller report, to evidence of collusion with the Russians, and to uh, obstruction of justice. Those are two key elements, obviously, but there's also the question of, of unconstitutional and illegal violations of the Emoluments Clause, that is to say, enrichment of the president, uh, and, and whether there's any evidence uh, that he did that. You know, getting money from foreign certainly powers. certainly a lot of questions about certainly that. certainly a lot of questions uh, about that. Uh, there, there, there are other... Uh, so you are currently money, looking campaign. at those things as well right yeah, the, now. The, as... the, uh, Michael Cohen was sent to jail for illegal campaign finance uh, use of hush money. Uh, and the evidence was the president uh, uh, instructed him to do that. It was for the mm -hmm. president's benefit. That would certainly be something So you're looking, looking at, at things like quid pro quos for why he is, is, has a U.S. policy adjusted on, say, Saudi Arabia. And conce you're looking conce at money flows. Conce you're looking at things, conceivably, like conceivably, yes. So, so I want to ask you about something else. I don't, I don't know if you saw this. Obviously, you saw the president went to El Paso and Dayton. Um, and, and when he was in El Paso, he went to a hospital, as you know. Uh, when he was in there, there was a cell phone video of a conversation that he had. And uh, so, so he's there. Eight, eight, eight people are still there recovering. Um, obviously, many people died. Uh, he was praising the medical staff for their response. And then he said this. And this is the moment uh, that was captured on video. Here he is. I was here three months ago. We made a speech, and we had a state. Uh, what was the name of the arena? That place was packed, right? Was from that from there was some crowd. Thank you. For and we had twice the number you. outside. And then you had this crazy Beto. Beto had like 400 people <laughs> in a parking lot. They said his crowd was wonderful. What do you say to that? That's that's what he said in the hospital. <sighs> well, it shows the president's incredible self-absorption um, when he should have been thinking about and talking about uh, the people who were murdered, uh, um, who were murdered in El Paso, the fact that uh, uh, the, the, the um, manifesto of the murderer attract his language uh, and that he may have bore, bear some responsibility uh, for, for getting people to, to, uh, to think that the country is under invasion and they have to protect it by murdering people. Um, and at the least that he's in a hospital where people are recovering from serious injuries and all, of the, and all he's concerned about, all he's thinking about is his crowd compared to Beto O'Rourke's crowd. He's an, just a self-absorbed, selfish uh, individual. And, period. And, 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 and the fact also is, we, the House of Rep he is part of the legislative process, the yes. president is. The House of Representatives reported uh, a very serious legislation uh, to prevent gun violence. Uh, we reported legislation, uh, we, we, the, our committee reported it to the House, the House voted, yeah. adopted uh, a, a, a bill for universal background uh, checks before people can get guns, uh, to plug some loopholes in that, and it's been over 160 days. Mitch McConnell refuses to take it up in the Senate. The President, although he said he was in favor of background, uh, background checks legislation, has refused to urge Mitch McConnell or the Republicans to take it up. Um, when are they going to start protecting the American people? All right, well, Chairman Nadler, I appreciate your time. Thank you. You're welcome.